Slim. At Ask Slim, uh, we firmly believe that a trading plan, crafting a trading plan is a critical aspect of being a disciplined trader. Uh, this approach is particularly important in an environment where there are no certainties, only odds. And so with this in mind, as, as Slim announced, we're really excited to introduce a, a new segment to the Ask Slim uh, Mark Week live show, and that's trade planning with the analyst team. So in this segment, you're going to have a chance to see how Slim, RV, Katie, and myself uh, put the Ask Slim methodology, which combines cycle analysis, momentum studies, and our FIB swing high, swing low techniques into action as we go from analysis to trade idea. So that's the intro, and Slim's going to uh, kick it off uh, with his uh, first review. Right. Yeah, this is going to be fun. What I really love is that each of us did this all on our own, uh, and uh, I'm just going to spend just a second talking about the nature of the analysis because we do cycle analysis and what that is is looking at the energies of the market the uh, the repeating rhythms that happen everywhere in nature call that the heartbeat of the market and again those of you that are not that familiar with this then i really encourage you go to our website to workshops there's a free video on there and you will learn about that so this is what a standard chart looks like with people that have moving averages on it and i just wanted to show you the blank before that we put our artistic work on there uh, we all four of us do this and here is the weekly chart as i now put on the cycle analysis and i'm going to move over to the daily chart and put that cycle analysis on there and this gives us just an absolute wealth of information so my uh my look here is a short-term uh look at disney and it is positive so first thing is what makes it positive one of the key things that makes it positive is that you see this trend right over here where uh, this cycle peaked right over here very early and then came down and made a much lower low. This is what we call a negative uh, configuration and negative translation. The translation being that the cycle translated into a peak only in the second week over here and then spent the whole rest of the cycle moving to the downside as you see right over here. This cycle might have increased in length a little bit. The low actually might have occurred right over there. That does not really matter uh, because it came right in between, as you can see, the ideal uh, trough period or ideal low period. And we have this uh, all mapped out on all of our charts uh, uh, that Katie uh, handles with the cycle low timing tracker. And uh, then you could see right over here, momentum, which uh, was measured by the by our reversal scout, uh, came over here and turned up and gave us a sense that it was confirming the bottom in here. And then Disney came to the upside. Of course, Disney has had some very bad news, changing CEOs, and also uh, in uh, regard to uh, some of the um, political things that have gone on that have gotten in their way here. And that's why the stock has gotten hit. But the question is, is there more value? Well, I'm not really looking at value here. I'm just looking at energies. And you can see in here, when we got above that level right there, that last cycle, that was a breakout. You could see that it is um, it is uh, highlighted right over there uh, for our members. And I'll just uh, open this up right over here. And you can see as it got above that level, it is positive right there. And that said to me, well, this is now a positive stock. When I go to the daily right over here, you can see the magnificence of the cycle movements in here, just perfect rhythms right there. And you can see beautiful rhythms right in here. And then this last cycle was configured very strongly. This is practically a swamp cycle. In other words, the upside energies were so strong. You can see the slim ribbon stayed positive. The slim ribbon PO giving you these upward signals that momentum was coming back to the upside. And how you can see right over here, it is turning back up. Upside projections, there's the minimal target zone right over there sometime in the next several weeks. So this is a short-term look. I would project it to get up here to 98.5 to around 101 right now in this next two or three weeks and maybe even above that level. So that's a very, very positive pattern. I see some hands going up as you resonate with that. The uh, upside right over here, big resistance 103 and then 104.35. So those are potential upsides, but this is a very bullish pattern. And in my opinion, just getting ready to move back to the upside. That is my look 
at Disney, and I hope you found that great. We're going to turn this now over to RV. All right, Slim. Thanks so much. A great look there at DIS. I uh, certainly like that one as well. Let's uh, let's pull up Nucor. That's symbol NUE. That's the one that I'm going to share with you. Um, just give me a second to make sure it loads. So this is our weekly and daily cycle on uh, on Nucor. And I don't what think is... we're seeing your. Uh... Are we seeing it? Can you see it? It should see yes. a chart, a, a yep. weekly chart of Nucor. Uh, Nucor weekly. Yep, just popped up. Okay, perfect. So we have just formed that low right here. And then we got into that new rally mode here in, in NUE and are right now just putting in this higher low. We're going to be looking for this to turn back to the upside and rally up through this old high at 174.92. And then we have a zone here for 175.57 up to 184. Around there is where we will be uh, overall, you know, um, um, looking for this to rally up into on this really small flag that uh, I think is 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 really forming here. Shift over and you can see what's happening. There's also a low due here over the next few days. Just looking for one more test down. Hold this zone right here that that I've highlighted here and then look for this to turn back up and then move through this old high there at 172.81. And we have this old high here at 174.92, okay? And if this is is to actually move through, 152.58, then this would be marked as a loser trade idea. Okay, so that's the overall look there at NUE. Watching for just one more hit down and then for this to turn right back to the upside. And uh, and now we're going to go ahead and shift over to Matt, correct? Oh, Katie, will go, Katie will go next. Okay. Thanks, RV. Uh, yep. Okay. Great job. Let me take the screen. And let me know when you can see the cycle low timing tracker. Yes. Yep. Got so, it. Good. Okay. So I'm looking at Boeing for a possible trade setup. But Boeing is found over here on the cycle low timing tracker in this box called cycle timing period of risk. And we're in the daily time frame. So as it forms a daily cycle low, it will also appear over here in the bottom pending box and then in bottom confirmed, but it's not in any of those yet. So no sign of a cycle low having formed. I'll be showing you that on the chart. Now also notice these green boxes next to the symbol. Those are a visual indication that conditions based on momentum and cycle phasing are currently positive in the intermediate and short term time frames. And I will now switch over to the chart. Let me get rid of that box. Let me know when you can see the uh, Boeing weekly chart. Got it. All right, so this is the weekly chart. On the bottom here, we have a dominant 32 bar cycle with minor half cycles. We are six weeks off the cycle low that formed right here. And we have positive momentum with a green reversal scout. That's this green and purple ribbon on the chart. It helps us to identify cycle lows and cycle peaks. So we're now approaching this prior cycle peak and the next level above that is the confluence of this other prior cycle peak and the 127.2% fib of the move from here to here. So that um, range is about 258 to 261 approximately. And when we switch over to the daily chart, uh, you'll see more clearly that we've had a very dramatic move to the upside. And this is the daily cycle low that corresponds to that intermediate low. Our reversal scout turned positive here. It's a little bit faster than the slim ribbon, which turned positive here. And now we are inside this daily cycle timing window that is indicated by these blue vertical dashed lines. So that's a period of time of several days around this ideal cycle trough when we expect this daily cycle to form a low and then to begin to move up into the rising phase of the next cycle. So that's why Boeing is on the cycle low timing tracker in that cycle timing period of risk box for the daily time frame, because we are inside this window of time. But no sign of a cycle low yet, or even really any retracement. Uh, this is a swamp cycle, like uh, Slim was talking about with his symbol. Um, and that means we've used up the entire cycle rallying, leaving very little time for a retracement. 
And this condition is one of the reasons I chose to talk about Boeing today. Everything is showing bullish, but we wouldn't want to enter alongside trade yet. We want to wait for a retracement so that we're not buying at the top. Ideally, I'd like to see us get down into this support zone um, and then turn back up to set up a high probability long side trade. Now that may not happen based on the strength here. So at a minimum, I'd like to get down to this 23.6% fib, which you will notice is inside the slim ribbon here. So if we can get that retracement, then the lower time frame momentum may switch neutral or negative, and we could use a return to positive momentum on that lower time frame chart for an entry signal. So Boeing is a relatively expensive stock, so a long call or even a call debit spread could be option strategies that you could employ in a low volatility environment to take advantage of an upward move that would use less capital than buying the stock outright. So I want to scroll back just really quick here on the daily chart to show you a similar scenario that occurred with Boeing in the past. Here we had a powerful upside move off an intermediate low, very shallow retracement of just a couple of days that made it into the slim ribbon, and then a continuation to the upside. However, another scenario is this powerful upside move, shallow retracement, and then an upside move that stalls and turns into a period of consolidation. So if you start to see this happening, then you might consider a more neutral option strategy, such as an iron condor. And that is um, all for Boeing. We'll switch over to Matt. Great work. Awesome. Yeah, great work. Great work, team. All right. So I'm Matt and I'm gonna uh, run through my trade planning segment. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so as part of uh, my segment, I uh, also wanted to uh, share the process I use to identify uh, what tools uh, on Ask Slim uh, to find um, the symbol that I was gonna do my trade plan on. And so I, I started with uh, the chart sub. Or if you can just uh, raise your hand if you see the chart sub. Okay, excellent. So our, our Charts Hub is a fantastic resource to be able to efficiently get access to our weekly and daily cycle analysis. So essentially you can click on any one of the focus list symbols that we have on the left-hand side here, which include uh, stocks, ETFs, and various futures markets. And then as I was running through uh, the symbols and having a lot of fun checking out all the work that the team does, uh, I settled in on GS and GS caught my attention. And as I wanted then to shift into a work mode, uh, analysis mode, I, I jumped off of our charts hub because that gave me uh, the idea uh, around which symbol I was going to select. And then from there, as RV, as Slim, as Katie did, we have the awesome opportunity to jump directly into the grids that the team prepares. And then I was able to do my work off of it. So the symbol I selected again was GS Goldman Sachs. And uh, we're, we're doing here our trade planning process. And that trade planning process uh, has five key uh, uh, trade planning questions we want to answer. And you can see how Slim, RV, Katie all answered these questions as we go. Number one, what's that outlook period? Very important to be able to identify your outlook period because then you're going to go do your work off of those charts around that time frame. And number two is directional bias. You need to have uh, a way to filter the market information so that you can determine your directional uh, bias. And as each one of us uh, step that through, we look at our, our cycle patterns, our cycle structures. Uh, we look at the translations of the cycle. We look at cycle timing. We look at momentum. And uh, I'm gonna step through real quick uh, what, how I identified my bias, which was uh, on the long side or more bullish. So you can see here that GS made a cycle low. And then in that next uh, rising phase to peaking phase, we made a peak out over here. Well, when that trough came out in uh, October-ish, late October, it came over here and that's our anchor point. And if I use our, our FIB extension or FIB retracement tool, that will give me a sense of some key levels. And a very important level for us is going to be that 78.6, uh, which was right around this level here. And once we actually, if I redraw this one, I missed that. Here we go. So I can be more precise. Should be up here on that FIB, that 78.6, which suggests that we now over the last two weeks, we've, we're going to have two closes above that 78.6. 
uh, which suggests there is a shift in that daily or that weekly cycle pattern, opening up the door to uh, continued higher prices. So now that I have my uh, bias in place, I also then want to, uh, which also is determined by momentum. So we have our, our momentum study on here, our reversal scout. Uh, that also gave me the indication of a, a current positive momentum condition along with the positive uh, cycle structure warning and the fact that we have a good amount of time left in this uh, rising peaking phase, which could go out in, for another couple months. It doesn't mean we'll have a linear move straight up, uh, but there are high odds that the uh, upward advance is likely to continue. And then from there, we want to pick out our key uh, levels on the upside. We want to identify a reevaluation. And based on this overall positive condition, I use the our, our swing high, swing low analysis, which helped me then to give uh, three upside projections. And based on the uh, current positive cycle uh, structure, the first one would be that cycle peak. So that would be projection number one. And then using the swing high, swing low analysis that I did, there are two upper projections. Uh, one uh, is uh, more uh, of a uh, maybe an extreme look, uh, but GS has put in runs of over 100 points in a rising peaking phase. So it's not out of the question uh, that if you if it did it again, we could get up into that third projection zone. To get a real uh, good look at the uh, condition on the daily chart. So again, I'm looking at a, a three to eight week outlook, but over the short term here, GS is still very powerful. And as Slim described in uh, RV and Katie, we look at the uh, this, the, the cycle translation and, and GS is going to have a positive right-hand translation where the peak is going to form in the right-hand side. And given the current strength of this move, there's potential that GS might not peak until it gets up into these upper boundaries that I've identified here. Now, similar to the, to the team also, we're coming uh, into that late peaking uh, phase where uh, a pullback is going to be likely and looking at it being a, a, a rather a shallow uh, corrective period, getting into uh, maybe the 23.6 to the 38.2 uh, from that swing uh, low up to that peak, and then uh, looking at uh, those being potential entry areas. If it got below this uh, level here, right around 319.50, uh, that would suggest to me that I have to reevaluate this overall plan. Uh, but based on the current pattern uh, structures, uh, pattern translations, configurations, uh, it is suggesting to me that uh, in uh, off of the daily chart, that this would be a key uh, upside projection zone over the next three to four uh, weeks. Uh, one more uh, piece of information that I wanted to share as part of uh, what we offer is that you get access to what we call our raw, this is a chart streams grid, but a, a raw multi time frame grid where you can plug any symbol of your choice into it. And it's really helpful as you want to uh, get into the actual entry and exit uh, scenarios uh, of, of these trade ideas. And so I talked about an intermediate and I talked about a, a sort of a short term outlook with with GS as well. And when you get into the the multiple time frame grid here, and I'm looking at the two hour, it's really helpful to then be able to see when the the, the likelihood of that next leg up or down uh, is in motion. And it also helps then to determine some potential reevaluation levels, uh, depending on your time frame. And so I'm on that two hour side right now. And you can see today, uh, that both of our momentum indicators turn back up. So a reversal scalp plus a slim ribbon uh, turn back up. This would suggest we probably have some more room to go on that upside. And if I was, if I was looking at those targets based on that swing low, a swing high, swing low uh, here, then I would be looking uh, in that near term, 352, maybe to 356, where we might make that peak and then come back into uh, some support area before we make that next advance. So there's my look at uh, GS. Hope that it was helpful to everyone. Back Thanks, to you, man. Slim. Thank you. Really good. I would say that was fantastic. Just great awesome. work from Matt and the entire team. So this is great. All right. So I'm going to grab this back and uh, we will uh, move on. Uh, that was uh, just uh, four pieces of analysis that is just such uh, a good look at the commonality and the way we look at uh, our analysis and how very different we are from so many other sites. I'm pretty proud of that. Great work. 